He was a member of the royal family, a naval hero, and a man who shaped the destiny of nations while playing royal matchmaker and mentor to princes and a future king. From the bloody fields of World War II, to the chaos of India's partition, to his influence behind the scenes in the British royal family, Lord Louis Mountbatten's life was as illustrious as it was controversial. This is the extraordinary story of Lord Louis Mountbatten, 1st Earl Mountbatten of Burma, who stood at the crossroads of history, leaving behind a legacy marked by both triumph and tragedy. History's Most Fascinating Figures, Part 35. Louis Francis Albert Victor Nicholas Battenberg was born on June 25, 1900, into one of Europe's most influential families. His great-grandmother was Queen Victoria, and his father, Prince Louis Alexander of Battenberg, was a decorated naval officer, serving as First Sea Lord. His mother, Princess Victoria of Hesse, was a German princess, and his older sister Louise would become the Queen of Sweden, while his sister Alice was the mother of the future Prince Philip. Raised amidst the grandeur and opulence of royalty, Louis was not destined for the throne, but rather for a life of service to it. Inspired by his father's distinguished naval career, Louis was determined to follow in his father's footsteps and one day attain the same heights. With a deep sense of royal duty and naval tradition instilled in him, he set his sights on forging his own path to military glory. He attended the prestigious Royal Naval Colleges at Osborne and Dartmouth, at just 16, Mountbatten joined the Royal Navy during the final years of World War I, assigned to the battlecruiser HMS Lion, and later to the battleship HMS Queen Elizabeth, he witnessed the harsh realities of naval warfare. Although his role was limited by his youth, these formative experiences gave him a first-hand view of the devastation and sacrifices of military service. He developed a love for naval strategy and leadership that would define his future career, sharpening skills that would later fuel his passion for restoring Britain's influence on the world stage. The war also offered him a front row seat to the crumbling of empires, a lesson in power and legacy that would stay with him for the rest of his life. It was during this time that King George V changed the royal family's name from Saxe Coburg and Gotha to Windsor, curbing anti-German sentiment. Louis' family followed suit, adopting the new surname Mountbatten. During the interwar period, Mountbatten's naval career advanced rapidly and his personal life flourished. In 1922, he married Edwina Ashley, a wealthy and glamorous heiress, and together they became a symbol of high society, mingling with political and military elites worldwide. The couple had two daughters, Patricia and Pamela. Mountbatten's expertise in communications and naval strategy earned him recognition within British military circles, and in 1934, he received his first command on the destroyer HMS Daring. His charm and connections also made him a prominent figure in British society, and he even served as personal naval aide-de-camp to King Edward VIII. But perhaps his most enduring legacy from this period was his role as a royal matchmaker. In 1939, during a royal visit to the Dartmouth Royal Naval College, Mountbatten arranged for his nephew, Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark, then a young naval cadet, to be the personal escort for Princesses Elizabeth and Margaret. It was during this famous visit that the future Queen Elizabeth is said to have fallen in love with Philip. This matchmaking effort laid the foundation for one of the most iconic royal marriages of the 20th century. Mountbatten's influence within the royal family grew, as did his bond with Prince Philip, whose naval career and future marriage were deeply influenced by Mountbatten's guidance. Philip would later even adopt Mountbatten as his surname, cementing their connection. World War II launched Mountbatten from a rising star in the Royal Navy to a global hero. At the outbreak of war in 1939, he took command of HMS Kelly, leading the 5th destroyer flotilla on daring missions. He brought the Duke and Duchess of Windsor back from France and spearheaded the evacuation of Allied forces during the Namsos campaign in Norway. However, his luck ran out when HMS Kelly was sunk during the Battle of Crete, a loss that would later inspire the film in which we serve. 
Undeterred, Mountbatten rose from the wreckage and took command of the aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious. During a visit to Pearl Harbor in October 1941, he noted its vulnerability, warning that it was a perfect target for a Japanese surprise attack, a prediction that proved tragically accurate. Mountbatten, a favorite of Winston Churchill, was then appointed Chief of Combined Operations. He masterminded ambitious projects, from developing underwater oil pipelines used for the D-Day landings to orchestrating the Brunewald Raid, which provided crucial intelligence on German radar technology. Not all his efforts were celebrated. His plan for the Dieppe Raid ended in disaster, with heavy losses in an amphibious assault on the German-held port of Dieppe in France. Though costly, the hard lessons learned from Dieppe would prove instrumental in the success of the Normandy landings on D-Day. In January 1943, Mountbatten attended the Casablanca Conference in Morocco as part of Churchill's staff. Later that year, Churchill appointed him Supreme Allied Commander of Southeast Asia Command, promoting him to acting full admiral. Mountbatten's bold and sometimes controversial leadership style earned him both admiration and criticism. His strategic ingenuity and hands-on approach solidified his reputation as a formidable commander, yet he was also critiqued for his willingness to take risks. Nevertheless, his successes were undeniable. His leadership was pivotal in the Allied recapture of Burma from Japanese forces, and he accepted the formal surrender of Japanese forces in Singapore from General Seishiro. In recognition of his service, King George VI honored him with the title Earl Mountbatten of Burma. In 1947, Mountbatten stepped into the most politically charged role of his career as the last Viceroy of British India. His task was clear, end British rule no later than June 30th, 1948, while striving for a united India. However, he was authorized to adapt as circumstances demanded, with one overriding goal, to extricate Britain swiftly and with as little reputational damage as possible. As the situation grew increasingly volatile, Mountbatten found himself in a delicate dance between his mandate and the urgent need to prevent widespread chaos. Religious and political tensions were at a boiling point and he worked closely with key figures like Jawaharlal Nehru and Muhammad Ali Jinnah to negotiate a transition he hoped would be peaceful. Yet, as unrest escalated, he realized there was no time to lose. Although his advisors favored a gradual transfer, Mountbatten concluded that only a swift and decisive exit could stave off civil war. By his reckoning, independence could not wait until 1948. It had to happen before the year was out. Despite the appeals of leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, who urged the preservation of a united India, Mountbatten saw that partition had become inevitable. He thus worked with Nehru and Jinnah to divide the subcontinent into the new nations of India and Pakistan. But the division unleashed a torrent of violence, resulting in one of the largest and most tragic mass migrations in history. Millions were displaced and hundreds of thousands lost their lives. While some commend Mountbatten for navigating an impossible situation with diplomacy, others contend that his accelerated timeline contributed to the chaos. Amidst the turmoil, he forged a close friendship with Nehru, who requested that Mountbatten stay on as India's first governor general to help stabilize the fledgling nation. Though his presence brought some measure of continuity, the horrors of partition would forever haunt his legacy. Mountbatten's tenure as Viceroy marked the symbolic end of the British Empire in Asia and cemented his place in history. Yet, his legacy remains as complex and controversial as the turbulent events he oversaw. After his service in India, Mountbatten quickly resumed his distinguished military career in Britain. Rising swiftly through the ranks, he became Vice Admiral in 1949 and later Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean Fleet and NATO Commander Allied Forces Mediterranean, achieving full Admiral status in 1953. In 1955, he reached the pinnacle of his naval career as First Sea Lord, the same position his father once held, which had fueled Mountbatten's lifelong ambition. This marked the first time in British history that both father and son held this prestigious role. 
In 1959, he was appointed Chief of the Defence Staff, Britain's highest military position, where he led modernisation efforts for the Cold War, including the unification of the Admiralty, War Office and Air Ministry into a centralised Ministry of Defence. Amidst these professional milestones, Mountbatten faced a personal tragedy in 1960 with the sudden loss of his wife, Edwina. Although their marriage had often been strained, her death had a profound impact on him, and he continued her legacy of humanitarian work. Despite this personal setback, Mountbatten remained in his position until 1965, when he was relieved by Prime Minister Harold Wilson. Mountbatten's influence extended far beyond military matters, and he became a trusted advisor to both political leaders and the British royal family. Beyond his official duties, Mountbatten's most enduring legacy was his mentorship of his great-nephew, Prince Charles. Known affectionately as Uncle Dicky, he became a surrogate grandfather to Charles, guiding him on everything from royal duties to personal relationships. This close bond profoundly shaped Charles's views on leadership and the monarchy. Mountbatten encouraged Charles to think independently and engage with global issues, moulding him into a thoughtful and forward-thinking leader. This relationship solidified Mountbatten's legacy as both a military hero and a guiding force within the British royal family, with an influence that endures to this day. In 1979, Mountbatten's life came to a tragic and violent end. While vacationing with his family off the coast of Ireland, a bomb planted by the Irish Republican Army exploded on his boat, killing Mountbatten, his teenage grandson and two others. The assassination shocked the world, sending waves of grief through Britain and the royal family. Both India and Burma observed periods of mourning, reflecting Mountbatten's lasting international influence. For Prince Charles, the loss of his beloved mentor was deeply personal, marking the end of an era and leaving a lasting void. Mountbatten's death not only brought a heartbreaking close to a life filled with triumphs and controversies, but also underscored the enduring complexities of British-Irish relations. Though his legacy remains as complex as the man himself, Mountbatten's influence on both the military and the monarchy endures to this day. From the battlefields of two world wars to the corridors of royal palaces, Lord Louis Mountbatten lived a life steeped in power, influence and controversy. He played pivotal roles in some of the 20th century's most defining moments, from military exploits and diplomatic missions to guiding future monarchs and shaping nations. Although Mountbatten never sat on the British throne, he ensured that one day a Mountbatten would, cementing his legacy within the heart of the monarchy. His life was a tapestry of triumph and tragedy, as well as a testament to both the glories and shadows of empire. Though Lord Louis Mountbatten's story ended in violence, his legacy endures, woven into the history of the British monarchy and the destinies of nations, a life that continues to echo through the ages. As always, don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button. Your support helps this channel grow, allowing us to bring you even more incredible stories. If you enjoyed this video, we release new episodes weekly, so click the bell icon so you never miss a future video. This is Unrecalled History. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.